Thanks for joining me as we talk about the beta-specific adrenergic agonists. Isoprenaline, or in the United States, isoproterenol, is a beta-specific adrenergic agonist. As a very broad overview, isoprenaline, or isoproterenol, is a medication that's used to treat bradycardia, or in other words, slow heart rate, and also to treat heart block as it acts like adrenaline on the cells of the heart. When we say beta-specific adrenergic agonist, what do we mean? Recall that adrenaline, or sometimes called epinephrine in the United States, binds to receptors throughout the body. And some of those receptors are alpha receptors and some of them are beta receptors. And then there's subtypes of those receptors as well. So there's alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors. The beta-specific adrenergic agonists have an affinity for mostly the beta receptors, but they're not selective to a subtype for instance, beta-1 or beta-2. Let's take a closer look at isoprenaline or isoproterenol. When we say that isoprenaline or isoproterenol is a beta-specific adrenergic agonist, we mean that the drug binds to the beta receptor and produces an adrenaline response in the organs that have beta receptors. And in order to remember the actions and side effects of these drugs, we just need to understand what those receptors do. The beta-specific adrenergic agonists will hit the beta-1 receptors. And beta-1 receptors are in the heart, in the juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidneys, and in the GIT. So the beta adrenergic agonists will actually exert a fight or flight response in the heart. That'll be increased contractility, increased heart rate, It'll stimulate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism in the juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidney. That's going to actually raise the blood pressure. And in the GIT, it's going to decrease the peristalsis, possibly leading to constipation. The beta-specific agonists will also hit the beta-2 receptors, which are on the bronchioles the skeletal muscle, and in the liver. In the lungs, it's going to open up the bronchi, dilating them. In the skeletal muscle, it's going to give a fine motor tremor. And in the liver, it's going to increase the glycogen breakdown. So it's going to increase the level of glucose in the blood. So you see, if you remember the location of the beta-1 and the beta-2 receptors, and you just think logically about what would happen if you stimulated those in a fight-or-flight response, you can remember almost all of the side effects of isoprenaline or isoproterenol. There is something that you wouldn't be able to predict, though. There's a warning with iso prenaline or isoproterenol, that repeated use can actually result in a paradoxical airway constriction. Remember that they normally dilate the airways, but with repeated use, they can actually result in a constriction. And now you know that isoprenaline or isoproterenol in the United States is a beta specific adrenergic agonist. Isoprenaline or isoproterenol in the United States is primarily used for heart block or bradycardia. Isoprenaline may actually produce tachycardia 
and predispose the person to cardiac arrhythmias. Also, repeated use can actually cause a paradoxical airway constriction, despite the fact that it normally dilates the airways. Thanks for joining me.